In this video, I will be talking about the Three Kingdoms period of China, focusing on the many talented heroes of that time. Dong Zhuo Remembered for his tyrannical reign within the capital city Luoyang, after he claimed power in the year 189 by dethroning the current emperor and instating his own puppet emperor. He took authority over a power vacuum, following the murder of the Ten Eunuchs, whereafter he ruthlessly ruled the capital for the next three years. Born in the 140s in Lin Tao Longxi Commandery, he stumbled upon an old sword whilst out farming one day, which had the words, slash the kings like logging engraved into it. He took the sword to Kai Yong for an assessment, who then insisted it belonged to a bygone warlord who once warred with the founding emperor of the Han dynasty some 300 years ago. Dong Zhuo went to the capital in the year 165, where he joined the Imperial Guard and furthered his career after his involvement in a successful campaign against some rebels. For his deeds, he was promoted to five various positions which he held for the next 20 years or so until the Yellow Turban Rebellion in 184. Dong Zhuo was unsuccessful at subduing Zhang Jiao's forces in Ju Lu, but was eventually reinforced by Huan Fu Song, who helped him secure a victory. Very little time passed until another rebellious movement broke out, this time in Liang province, which was rapidly gaining popularity after receiving the support of Han Sui. Huan Fu Song was placed in charge of the defence of Chang'an, but his poor performance lowered his popularity within the court and among the Ten Eunuchs. This soon led to him being replaced by Zhang Ren, where Dong Zhuo found himself placed under him. Even with their massive army, they also struggled to make any decent progress. Until one superstitious night, when a shooting star seemingly landed on the rebels' camp. They saw it as a bad omen, which Dong Zhuo took advantage of by rushing their camp and claiming a swift victory. Zhang Wen then gave Dong Zhuo and another unit the order to give chase without heeding the advice of Sun Jian, who recommended to attack the enemy supply line first. In turn, Zhang Ren found his own supply line cut and is pursuing units in serious trouble. All units but Dong Zhuo's fell apart at this point, so he acted quickly, damming up a nearby river in a fashion that would allow him to catch fish but actually used it as an escape route and led his men across the river to safety. After receiving a promotion for his actions, and a few years passing, he was then again ordered to assist against the Liang rebels, this time with Huang Fu Song at Cheng Kang Castle. Their relationship soured after two disagreements and Huang Fu Song coming out on top both times. First, Dong Zhuo wanted to engage the enemies laying siege to the walls, whilst Huang Fu Song preferred to wait until the enemy grew tired. Eighty days later, when the fatigued rebel army began to retreat, Huang Fu Song ordered the pursuit, which Dong Zhuo then disagreed with. Huang Fu Song then left Dong Zhuo behind and scored a massive victory by himself, which left bitter feelings between them. After their defeat, the Liang rebels branched out into three groups. One led by Ma Teng, another followed Han Sui, whilst the third joined the self-proclaimed King Song Jian, who ended up isolating himself from mainland affairs for almost 30 years. Dong Zhuo recognised the growing weakness within the Han Empire and refused his new promotional position, instead favouring to stay with his men in Liang province, where he built up relations with Ma Teng and Han Sui. In the year 189, he was called upon by the Han military Grand Marshal He Jin for assistance against the growing tension he suffered within the court regarding the Ten Eunuchs. As Dong Zhuo approached the city of Luoyang, he learned that He Jin had been assassinated by the eunuchs, who had already fled with the emperor, so he quickly had him retrieved and brought back to the capital. Realising his 3,000 men didn't install much dominance, he had them sneak out at night, only to return the next day, creating the illusion that he had more men than he did. He soon recruited the mighty Lu Bu who resided in the city, and drafted many of the available troops, who now found themselves without a commander. He then proceeded to remove the current emperor from his seat, replacing him with his 8-year-old younger half-brother, before declaring himself the highest ranking title possible of Grand Chancellor. This brash treatment of the court inspired Yuan Shao and other regional warlords to brand him a traitor and to unite against him. Dong Zhuo prepared by ordering the collection of 30 years worth of rations, which caused a massive food shortage for the people under his rule. In retaliation to Yuan Shao's alliance against him, Dong Zhuo later eradicated all known Yuans within Liu Yang 
but never stopped wrongly accusing people, which led to thousands of innocents being killed. Sun Jian successfully led the coalition vanguard against Hua Jiang, Hu Zhen and Lu Bu, before refusing a marriage proposal from Dong Zhuo. Sun Jian then pressed his attack on Liu Yang, where he saw through an ambush laid out by Dong Zhuo and forced him to retreat. Whilst he fled, Dong Zhuo ordered the destruction of anything within the city that could be deemed useful for his enemies. His troops ransacked tombs and looted the wealthy, whilst forcing people out of their homes and onto the newly declared capital city Chang'an. Whilst they made their way between cities, Lu Bu was ordered back to hold Sun Jian's army at bay, which he did for a short while before the Tiger Jiang Dong broke through his forces and claimed the city. The coalition had weakened considerably due to internal arguments, so Sun Jian soon abandoned the ruined city in favour of heading home. This meant Dong Zhuo's only real opposition at that time was an old Han officer named Zhu Jun and an old friend of Dong Zhuo's, Tao Xian. Li Zhue led an army to engage the pair and came out victorious. He then raided the area with his men, rounding up slaves from the defeated army and the locals from the area. The harsh treatment that prisoners received under Dong Zhuo further dissuaded them from opposing him. One of the torture techniques employed was to be burned alive from the feet up, whilst your clothes are soaked in fats or oils. It is said Dong Zhuo would relish the looks on his victims' faces and sounds that they would make. Dong Zhuo's tyranny went unchecked as he squandered the realm's money on personal treasures, instating many of his family members into high positions to safeguard his rule. He held expensive banquets, which often showcased acts of cruel torture on his enemies, much to the distaste of those present who helplessly had to sit by and watch. In a scheme for even more wealth, Dong Zhuo had 9 out of 12 famous bronze sculptures smelted down into coins. Unfortunately for him and everyone else, the new coins didn't weigh the same as the official ones, which devalued all copper coins as a result. He tried to secure the loyalty of his general Lu Bu by swearing an oath of fatherhood with him, adopting him and positioning him as his own personal bodyguard. Their relationship grew strained once Dong Zhuo discovered that Lu Bu had had an affair with one of his harem, which resulted in an argument where Dong Zhuo threw a hand axe at Lu Bu, who was quick enough to dodge it. The interior minister, Wang Yun, had conspired with others to remove Dong Zhuo from office for a while now, and by successfully convincing Lu Bu to turn on his master, they were able to act. Lu Bu and Li Su met with Dong Zhuo, where Li Su simply stepped forward and stabbed him. Shocked and confused, Dong Zhuo called upon Lu Bu for help, who simply stated, This is an imperial order, before ending his life. Following the death of the tyrant, a candle was placed in his belly button that burned the fat of his corpse for days. Even though a strict order was placed to not tamper with the body, Kai Yong, who appraised Dong Zhuo's sword from the farmer's field all those years ago, attempted to move his corpse but was arrested and executed for it. An order soon followed to execute the entire Dong clan, including his 90-year-old mother. If you enjoyed my video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.